Park. Happy first Sunday. Good to see you all here. And um, really enjoyed the first part of the first Sunday program. Imam Aji Muhammad. It's always good to see people uh, when they fast, and especially loved ones. Like you all, our family, y'all know that by now, right? So when I see you and you, you've been fasting, everybody look younger, about 10, at least 10 years younger in this audience right now. And, and you know, and it's from fasting, it's Allah's mercy. You know? um, it's a great blessing, and I thank Allah I'm able to be here during this uh, Ramadan fast with you all here at the mosque cares and enjoying the first Sunday. Very grateful and thankful to Allah. And uh, the things that, the situation that our community is in right now, us as a community and the mosque cares, that I'm even more pleased uh, with it, that uh, anxieties that we may have had in the past, uh, you all being the rock in the community, you know how they say it takes a village, that uh, we really want to pay uh, homage or show gratitude to uh, our seniors, and I hope y'all accept uh, me as you know saying that, you know, because it's the, it's the truth. Uh, and I hear about it where societies uh, all around the world uh, respecting this idea of a community uh, being responsible for the future life of, especially the young people, and uh, uh, the future life of the, the young ones and the youth. And us being the African American community, you can't help but to see what's in the media and the public and how we've been in the public eye being viewed as a really a troubled community especially here in Chicago with all the violence and random random violence and uh, just the trouble that you see for black African-American people with, uh, the problems with the uh, establishment the police and between poor black people um, that this uh, this example that we have of having uh, uh, this community atmosphere is uh, in the peace that Allah has, and the wisdom that Allah has uh, given you all to pass on to us is really what has kept, uh, really kept my, increase, I just kept, increased my faith in uh, the work that we're doing and, and encouragement. It's been a huge encouragement, y'all have been a huge encouragement uh, to me. And I'm not youth no more, you know. When I look in the mirror, I used to, you see a few gray hairs. Yeah, but a lot of my witness, I looked in the mirror the other day, and I must have lost some weight or something, but I looked and I said, man, that guy looked a little bit younger than he did last time I looked in the mirror. And I said, wow, that's a blessing. Oh, praise be to Allah. So that's um, something else you all pass on us, too, is how to stay healthy and how to be youthful. And uh, just your presence, you know, just that the peaceful spirit in your presence allow us to have a faith to continue on and believe in ourselves the way we should believe in ourselves. And uh, I would love to see more of the young people in our community, uh, you know, take on the character that you all, and the examples that you all leave for us, and, uh, and have the courage that you all have. Uh, and, uh, and you only get that really through, through faith, you know. So you have to, we have to increase our faith in the community and encourage our young people to have faith, and because uh, we all know right from wrong, but uh, we was having this conversation, and it's been on my mind, so it's always difficult. I was saying it back there, that uh, people often see us, uh, African American people, as being an ignorant people because we don't have what the other cultures have, and everybody know why we don't have that, what the other cultures have, because our, our stepdaddy chose a different path, path for us than he chose for his, for his uh, beloved. Uh, inheritors of him. You know, we inherit the, the plow and, and, and oh, suffering, and we inherit nothing, <laughs> you know. And then Andre Elijah Muhammad said, that's why we love him, because he don't give us nothing. <laughs> and, 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 and we know he our daddy, because we speak the same language as we do, look like us, so we just got a tan. So he know, he makes sure he, when he leaves something for the future, he don't leave it with that dark skin, you know. So, but there's a lot to be said about that. Uh, we have major, major, as a people, what I call daddy issues. And uh, it's because of them daddy issues, it's because our daddy still denying that he's, he is our daddy and he's responsible for us. But as a people, we try 
we say, well, we're human beings, a lot bless us. But if we had a community life, then that wouldn't be a problem. If we, if what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had established uh, was able to continue in a healthy course and then progress the way it did for us, and not just us here, there are communities uh, of believers larger than ours in different parts of the, the country and the world that still follow, that are followers of Imam W. E. Muhammad and still follow his economic and his community programs and they have healthy, thriving Muslim communities. But in order for us to uh, realize New Africa, that concept, which is true, which is really an uh, African-American village, the village that you hear the public talking about, that uh, in order to see that, that don't exist amongst the, the greater population of African-American people. So that's why I use that language. Because it's here and it's, we're real close. We, a lot of us are already there. And uh, there's some uh, African American communities that will argue with me that they are already there, that they have a, 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 a generational community that has gone for generations and have continued to continue to uh, look out for the well-being and the health of their their communities. There's some uh, some preachers out there that've been around through the 60s, 70s, 80s, and they 90s, and they still here. And they tell you, our community is very healthy. But the majority of us still out there with, with daddy issues. <laughs> and our daddy's still denying us. And instead of coming clean, they doing like the Arabs did. They just dig a hole and dump you in it. <laughs> like they did with their babies they didn't want, you know? And that's the truth. It's the truth. So the public, I think, should take more responsibility. This is my opinion for the mental uh, and spiritual health of African American people because we didn't get there on our own. We didn't get to be violent and ignorant. I had a woman coming up because she see me looking peaceful. They, they expect my, they, they uh, misinterpret my peaceful demeanor. I'm fasting. I'm usually always a peaceful, calm spirit. That's for being useful ignorance. So she come up and and she got this gin, this fiery gin, and I knew what she thought she was doing. She thought she was teaching me how to act, how to be a man. I'm like, I've been a man. You're not a man. You'll never be what I am. So I've been a man my whole life. So she's at the counter telling a woman, telling a woman, I don't know how this happened. I paid for that. Well, well they should have, last time I came here, they didn't tell me I had to do this and blah, 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 blah. And she spoke to me politely before she had approached the counter. But really, she's telling me, this is how you should handle these people. And, I, and in my mind, I said stuff a lot. I said, no good devil. You know, in my mind, because that was the devil. I don't care what color her skin was. Her skin happened to be white, but I said, no good because I know what you're doing. You think you're going to influence me to act like a gin, to be, to, to be uh, disrespectful and rude. And here you are in a library, you're talking to the teenage girls. I didn't mean to even put that much out there. But, but y'all can go back to that day and find that woman. But she's somewhere else being a devil, I'm sure. So she and the little babies, my children there. So, so I, I distracted my children and I kept them in a peaceful spirit until she left. Uh, but what they're doing is surrogating us. They try to teach the youth, and then you come in the ghetto, and you got black people getting locked up and going to jail, and you know who we trust more than we trust God Himself is a real live, breathing white person. You know that's Jesus Christ. When the white man walk in the room, most of us, Daddy will be telling you, "Come over here," and the white man will be talking, and you be scared. They go where Daddy said go. Or, you know the kids nowadays. You know. When I was a child, you got your head knocked around right. like an exorcist. You know, I never, I wouldn't, I ain't never had to get hit by my father. But I know I would be, I would be willing to bet my life that if I disrespected my father in a way where if he told me to do something in public or in private and I didn't do it, just blatantly disrespect him, I would, I would bet I would get hurt. I know he, it's just a, a law's mercy that. He ain't never killed none of us, because <laughs> he probably would <laughs> if you know. But we didn't, we didn't go that far. We didn't go that far. But children now, they, they have adopted this, this uh, spirit of aggression. The gin, the, the gin is the way where you aggressive, that the weak, the weak uh, dominate the, uh, I mean, the strong should dominate the weak. And, uh, and that's the opposite of human, uh, the, uh, human nature. The, uh, what appears to 
the ignorant to be weak is really strength. Mm -hmm. The strongest physical and uh, physical and emotional and spiritual uh, people in the community usually are the most peaceful, uh, forgiving people in the community. You see, and uh, and you know you can watch them kung fu movies. They they have, they the most pious one of the uh, monks. He be the he be the baddest one. <laughs> he, he whip up the whole youth community. <laughs> You know, and he just humble and pious, you know, walking like he, you know, floating on a cloud or something. But uh, that, that's, that's the deception. Satan comes and flips it up all upside down. Uh, and that's our challenge in the world is uh, how do we keep the world peaceful when the, the, the strength of the church is weak? People not going to church, people not going to the mosque and the temple. Even the temple, the Jews tell us the same thing. That uh, they're having a hard time holding on to their youth. So how do you pass the influence on them? And the mother's not in the house uh, passing on her good values to the children because she got to work in most households. So you see, you see a youth that has under double jeopardy. Well, before it used to be poverty and you had gang. The, the street life, you say, well, because of poverty, my son got swept up into crime and drugs and this and that. But then you look at him, and he be a, he be respectable, he be moral, but he is cold blooded gangster. You know, don't be a, a criminal, a thief. You know, he bust break in your your back window when you turn your back. You know, uh, and and then you got some that just like they was born for. They they devils and they live a life of a devil. You see, it looked like they were born to be a criminal. Uh, but now, you have that same type of character, but you got it in more sophisticated youth that appear to be polite, respectable, articulate, you know, educated. But they have they don't respect the elders. They don't respect the authority. They don't uh, respect even women, you know. Uh, young people and the women don't respect men, and they don't respect themselves. So uh, it's a breakdown of, uh, I think, the moral fiber of society, the education. The, you know, the children are not getting uh, sincere, uh, true direction. You know, it's like the uh, the media is the church now. And uh, you know, Muhammad warned this, and the reason why uh, I'm speaking about this, because I think we should be more alerted to this, that the uh, that he let the, the, the church and the mosque and the synagogue, he let us know, he said that pop culture is bigger than all of that. So, yeah. So, so uh, if a uh, leader like Imam Muhammad know that, you think the, the entertainment world don't know that? They knew it long before he said it. So, they giving you religion. They're giving the youth religion and they're giving the population religion. And uh, they got it all mapped out for you. And they got, just like Allah gives you your life uh, in the Quran and in Scripture from the beginning to the end, the, the spiritual journey for your soul, they're doing the same thing. They got a spiritual journey for your soul from the day you born to the day you die. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's, uh, and, it's, uh, and it's not uh, in the loving care that God gives you. you know, it's, in, it's in the hands of uh, capitalism. You know, people that just want to see how much money they can make off of you till they're done with off of you and your babies. Yeah. So, uh, got that off my chest. <laughs> but, uh, I'm a little lucky. I'm looking at things and it don't bother me anymore. It used to bother me when I used to see people in opposition to us and their tactics and the things they do and the things they use to do whatever they do, they ain't got nothing coming. I don't see nothing this week. So what we have decided to do is to be like um, like a like a, a, a good neighbor, a good friend that sees a little a little weakness in your brother. You should overlook that small weakness in your brother or your sister and look at all of the great gifts that Allah has blessed with them as a person and, and love them as a member of the family or community or whatever they are and, uh, and treat them with the respect that you wish they would treat you with. 
but uh, don't forget that they slide, you know, <laughs> and they full tricks, and they're going to keep doing the same old right. stuff. You know, a person that has a different moral vibe, level of morals than you, uh, if if you know that if you leave, if they left their wallet on your coffee table, you wouldn't touch it. And if you thought they were leaving, you would remind them because you're a conscious person that I think your wallet's still on the table before they leave. And uh, no matter how long y'all cohabitate, how well y'all cohabitate together. Uh, and how much you overlook their faults, you're not gonna you're not gonna forget that if you could left your your wallet there, there might be some dollars missing. You see, so that's how we should treat our brothers and sisters. You forgive, but you don't forget. Right. Yeah, right. and I think that's what the problem I had last Ramadan when people were saying that you should forgive and forget. I said, no, I didn't get this far. I got a lot of my peers that's dead and in jail because they. Forget. <laughs> I'm like, you, you ain't forget. You can get shot and killed for that, man. <laughs> no, you don't forget. Like, don't you want that Negro crazy? <laughs> he will blow your head off. And you going back over there? And I heard, I hear stories about that all the time. People would get into an argument. Now, that's a crazy fool. Get into an argument. Then left the situation. He done went home. And you ain't got home and calmed down. He went home, got his gun loaded, and came back and shot the people there. I don't know how you do that. That's a that's a sick person. That's a devil. Get mad, get hot, leave the situation, and he's still mad enough to kill. So he go load his gun and come back and shoot. And that's that's uh that's what happens in Chicago. And I know because I grew up on the south side of Chicago, and I know the mentality that was passed on to me from older people, older than me, who they got it from their fathers and their fathers. That certain lines you don't cross. And these youth nowadays with the, that don't have the home training and don't have the respect, they cross them lines. You know, and they cross them lines and say, hey. And then a lot of them get shot. And they ain't all gangbangers shoot people. I know it ain't. They make it make you think it was random guns or something, but it was probably a neighbor arguing with another neighbor <laughs> and somebody got shot. Yeah? Or somebody just shooting, driving down the street. You know? uh, so the community watch. That's real important uh, for to watch. You got to watch the crazy people in your neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. And if you see them arguing, you know, just keep an eye. You got to call the police. Call the police. Yeah. But, uh, I think things are things are getting better. I used to think that once all of the criminals were arrested or locked up, they was going to die off. But but they breed more, and it's through the culture, the pop culture, the rap and uh, just devils in the community. Yeah, they pass on their spirit to the children and they, they teach them and train them how to be uh, corrupt. Okay. Uh, the Ramadan session, I'm really excited about it. Um, there are a lot of details that can be given to us here. Um, oh, legacy, legacy. My brother, a lot of people don't know. And see, this is another thing. When, when you don't have faith, you don't you cut your your access to great great number of blessings. When your faith is weak, you, you cut your access to a great number of blessings. So things that people would see and learn by coming here, by having a little faith and say, "Well, the mosque is is ministry of Imam W. B. Muhammad." I'm not gonna write that off. I don't care what my sincere advisor is saying. We're not gonna write off the mosque. We're gonna go and see what Imam Lee. And uh, if we can help, we're going to try to help. So they see people come over here and they immediately come and say, well, we got to somehow either get these people in our picture or get these people away from the mosque cares. But I'm like, why don't you just sincerely try to help and participate? And Because uh, you would know, people see Kevin here. Kevin been here his whole life, him and his whole family. They used to be here every meeting that Imam Muhammad had. But they hadn't seen him for a while, so they... They think he, you know, they may be thinking he's somebody they can get and take, pull him away from him. I said, you spend five minutes with him, he's going to run you away from him. Uh, because he's like family, you know. He, when I first came to the community, I was uh, a young man. I didn't come here in, in, the, in the diaper like him. You probably, was, you were born in the community, right? Yeah, see, I, uh, my father kept me away because he wasn't, he, he knew he was intended to be the leader. And so he kept me away for a 
few years old. When I came into the community, uh, I met Kevin and most of your family, you know. Yeah. And um, and they were doing the same thing back 30 years ago that they're doing today. They're supporting the Mars Cares. They're participating. They're trying to hold the community together and trying to add and build and keep us in the direction that they see our leader has raised us uh, to be the type of community that we raised to be. And we're really proud to have them here. And they've accomplished much. They have a very uh, highly skilled and educated uh, group that they work with. And they come from a community that has a, a very rich and uh, in-depth uh, history in our community and a very vibrant uh, history and a, and, a, and a legacy of support and, uh, and unity. St. Louis, you know, you have a long legacy of leadership there. But during our lifetime, the longest, the, the leader that was there most of the time was Imam Ansari. Yeah, and we all know him and we, we all loved him. And, he was a strong supporter of Imam W. D. Muhammad, and, uh, and that community that uh, he led is, is uh, still there. And they're uh, and then looking to see what's the next step. And I think they're on their way. Uh, Imam Elam is uh, he, he's going to introduce and be that next, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, Imam Elam is going to introduce him. So I'm going to sit down so we can uh, see what legacy has to offer. And uh, like I said, they welcome them, their family. Uh, and they love our community, uh, maybe as much or more than we do. Because when a person gets in their car and they'll drive, you know, several miles from their home to participate, then they, you know they have a strong bond. I, I was telling my son, <laughs> just, just thoughts coming to my head. I was telling my son the other day. I said, man, I said I had a girlfriend that lived on the west side, <laughs> and I said. I broke up with her because I, I didn't want to. I didn't have no gas money. <laughs> I said that was too far to be driving, man. And I was trying to drop a little hint because he spent all his time whacking his car and going to see his girlfriend. But you know it's all good. So I told him I just said, hey, you know sometimes <laughs> you know you got to make them, cho them choices. But uh, that's none of my business, though. And you know I don't I don't like to get in this business anyway. But uh, that's the truth. My father said, talked about the life force. He said it's the strongest force in the human being for progress in the human being. So uh, if you wanted to interfere with that, you, you, you couldn't do nothing but make props for yourself anyway. So, uh, but it's all good. And I told him, you know, you know it, it don't come overnight. He, he was talking about marriage. And I said, man, you got to get some money. <laughs> you know. And I said, if she'll marry you, it's all good. But then you got to get some money because you need a roof. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, my grandbabies can visit, but I'm not building a home for them. <laughs> so, uh, uh, they know this. I'm really worse than this man. Than, uh, I'm not a kid. But uh, it's the truth. Uh, and today, marriage is something you should do. I believe in marrying, and uh, you don't have to live together. Get married. As a, like they say, a promissory ring, that's a step in the right direction. The promissory ring, the promise to get married, get engaged and get married. And then that will be motivation to find a, a place where you all can be more independent. You know? So I think that I would get married and, uh, uh, because it's a, more of a commitment. You know? Yeah. you know, some people, my mother, she let, people, she let you live in her house. My mother would say, you get married, you live, and she'll take care of it. I said, but my mother retired. <laughs> Rob too busy to take care of the second family. You know? but, uh, but I think it's a positive thing. The young people, because uh, they fall head over heels. When they get, when they're in love and they want to say, you should encourage them to get married. Uh, I just wish our, we didn't have this stigma in society that you need $10,000 before you even think about it. <laughs> You know, they planning the reception and the honeymoon and all of that, you know. And so most of our youth don't get married because they caught up in Hollywood. You know? yeah. And uh, I was shopping online, and uh, I don't know why they put these rings. They were sports rings that where you could take, because lifting weights, you can pinch your hand, and, and, and in some sports, you can get a, a ring hung up. I keep my ring kind of loose. You can get it hung up and break your finger. 
Uh, but they sell these sports rings, they're rubber, but it's really to replace your wedding band. If you put it, leave it at home, you're a sports ring. And so I bought some, gave them to my kids, my, uh, my boys, and they wear them all the time. I said, you're wearing them rings. I said, you got to buy a girl a ring, walk around with a ring on, like you're married. You know, but, but to them, it's, a, it's their nature. So uh, they're not really boys, they're grown men. But in their nature, they want to be married. And, uh, and the sisters, uh, uh, the same way I assume that the, the girls all have a grown, well, I got one, but she, a uh, different mother. So it's a different mentality. Mm -hmm. So it's you know, a mentality to where uh, they like to gamble with life. Mm -hmm. Like time don't you can't get time back once it's gone. Mm -hmm. So I believe in marrying young, and it's, it's a real wise thing because those will be the best days of your life, uh, and you obey a lot. Uh, marriage is a religious institution that you don't get married because you find you in love or because you. You uh, want to have this beautiful wedding like you saw on TV. You get married in obedience to Allah. Because Allah says do it. Otherwise, don't get married. Just be with the person you want to be with. All right. Uh, I'm going to have to let Mal come up. And the convention. We, we're getting the convention flyer. So we're, we're getting the thank you letters. We didn't have, I know a lot of people wondering where they thank you letters coming from. They coming because we have a convention flyer for the uh, the E, the Greater E uh, Convention. And with the name, the title we gave, it, we, a, we have a clear title, Robin, right? It's, um, we celebrate the Greater E. Yeah, celebrate, celebrating the Greater E, the 